Welcome to our latest adventure. Today we explore Hildebrand, Agent of Inquiry, from A Realm Reborn, Part 1. Hey everyone, and welcome to the Eorzean Archons. I'm FaZe. And I'm Catherine. This video will cover the Hildebrand Agent of Inquiry quests up to the Battle on the Big Bridge trial. There will be no spoilers in this video after the A Realm Reborn expansion. Remember to subscribe and click the bell icon if you'd like to be notified of future videos. Let's get started. Cat, we have a new mystery on our hands, the case of the missing quest. As in I'm bored and we need a new adventure. Zoinks, FaZe. There's a quest just over there by Wyman. He told me earlier that there is a fellow sleuth that needs our help. Jeepers, Cat, you're right. What trouble could be brewing in Eorzea today? Ghosts? Goblins? Maybe zombies? I don't know, but I hope there are snacks along the way. I'm hungry. <laughs> Looks like we're off on another adventure. We meet up with Wyman, who asks us if we know of Hildebrand. Never having heard of him, he goes on to tell us of a man who claimed to be Eorzea's greatest and most famous inspector. Hildebrand and his assistants supposedly were good at finding trouble, but not necessarily solving it. He then got it in his head that he was the hero of prophecy, meant to prevent the seventh umbral calamity. He then accidentally shot himself at Dalamud and died. Though oddly enough, his body was able to be recovered only recently in good condition, and he was given a proper burial. Which leads us to today. Nashu, Hildebrand's assistant, has become an inspector in her own right and has been spending a lot of time in the graveyard where Hildebrand was buried. She has a zombie problem that she needs help with. I wasn't sure about this Hildebrand fellow Wyman kept going on about, but I'm game for killing some zombies. Ugh, I hate zombies. I can't stand their moaning. Too creepy. Out past Camp Drybone, we find Inspector Nashu. She's glad someone came to help. Before she explains what exactly we're to assist her with, she tells us of her past. She and Hildebrand used to travel the world solving cases and thwarting evil. Sounds oddly familiar. However, their final case was in stopping Dalamud. In some strange event, Hildebrand was launched into the Red Moon and, as we've already learned, died. From then on, Nashu swore to continue on as an agent of inquiry in his place. With her past behind her, Nashu asks us to help her investigate some zombies in the area. They've been acting weird, and she needs information on why. Without question, we head over to put the zombies down. Again. While we were killing them, they asked us why we were disturbing their practice as they flexed around the desert trying to become... gentlemen. All that remains after is a parchment that read, A gentleman is, rather than does. We take the parchment back to Nashu, who immediately recognizes it as a map of the Sagoli Desert, with a spot marked to the south. A treasure map! I hope we get a portal with this one. Time to make some gill. <laughs> Calm down. I don't think this is that kind of map. At the location on the map, we call out, A gentleman is rather than does. From behind us comes a zombie asking who summons the gentle dead men. In a flash, we're surrounded. Then, from above, a gentleman calls out. He asks his fellow zombies to withdraw as he jumps down from his perch, landing ever so gracefully on his butt. Nashu recognizes him immediately as Hildebrand, Agent of Inquiry. Though our mystery man identifies himself only as Zombie Brand, Devourer of Brains. Since he's having a hard time remembering who he is, Nashu knocks some sense back into him. With bombs! After an explosion once again knocks the zombie on his butt, he seems to remember Nashu. It's now that we get a vision from the Echo of Hildebrand escaping his grave and befriending the local zombies. So many questions as to how this is possible, but at least we know the events that led us to this point. With Hildebrand back to his senses, he detects another case nearby. Sounds like we're getting roped into another adventure, this time in Ulda. As we enter the city, we meet up with Wymond again, who upon seeing his old friend a zombie, cries out in fear. Hildebrand reassures him that the reports of his death were greatly exaggerated. Nashu chimes in to say he's not a zombie, she checked. Hildebrand says we're not to question divine providence in reference to how he's still alive. He quickly turns his attention to the topic of a thieving duelist here in Ulda. Wyman says that a lady in the area recently had an encounter with the supposed duelist. With very little information, Hildebrand and Nashu rush off in search of more clues. Being a much better crime-fighting duo, we stay back to actually catch the name of this lass. The lady we're looking for is named Yellow Moon. She's a woman with a taste for the finer things in life, and is most likely down at the Weaver's Guild. We arrive at the Weaver's Guild at the same time as Hildebrand and Nashu, 
in time to hear of Yellow Moon talking about her missing item. Her pure heart, a priceless wand accessory, was taken from her sometime shortly after visiting both Sunsilk Tapestries and the Colosseum. Hildebrand suggests that we reenact her day in hopes of finding new clues. At the Sunsilk Tapestries, Yellow Moon explains how the only notable event that occurred was when a complete stranger professed to her his undying love. In shock, she dropped her very heavy purse on his foot and the stranger ran away. Why is Nashu sleeping over there by the crates? Not a very good assistant. Speaking of, what's with all the crates? Those aren't usually there. Hmm, actually weren't there some large crates back at the Weaver's Guild too? It's very odd. Moving over to the Colosseum, Yellow Moon tells a similar story of how while she was gambling, a gladiator came up from behind and confessed his undying love. In shock, this time she clocked him in the head with her heavy purse, knocking him unconscious. Hildebrand sees the truth in the matter. She was targeted by this thieving duelist not by chance, but because the thief hated Yellow Moon with a passion. While Hildebrand talks to Yellow Moon, we head over to the crates nearby. Even now she was suspicious of the crates now. She gives us some explosions and we bust the crates open, revealing yellow hooded men hiding within, and the pure heart wand is with them! We get Hildebrand's attention while he makes the wrong conclusion about how the gladiator must have been the culprit. With all eyes on the hooded men, they come clean and try to explain how they're basically a cult of admirers of Yellow Moon. They only meant to safeguard items she misplaced. Yellow Moon chases off the creeps. But that doesn't explain the duelist's role in this case. A woman overhearing our observations steps in to confirm. The duelist we're looking for only claims his victim's weapons after defeating them in single combat. Therefore, the creeps and crates we found is something separate altogether from this case. She identifies herself as Ellie, a reporter for the Mithril Eye. She's been investigating this case for weeks now, and should we be willing to work with her, she can get us a meeting with a true victim of the thieving duelist. As per usual, Hildebrand and Nashu accept and run off before learning where exactly we're going. We grab the name Humphrey from Ellie and are told we can find him at the Golden Bazaar. I'm sure the other two will somehow find their way back to us like they always do. Over on the outskirts of the Golden Bazaar, we find our guy. Humphrey tells us of how he was hardly a victim to the thieving duelist. You see, as a warrior of light that fought on the battlefield of Cartano, he bested the duelist and kept his weapon. Except, that's not actually how it went. Ellie comes in from the village with an older man and they share how Humphrey actually lost a sword that wasn't even his. The old man, Eleazar, trusted Humphrey with his father's blade to restore it, but instead he lost it in a duel. Seeing as the situation presents itself with no other leads, we agree to help track down the lost sword, and in doing so, hopefully find our duelist. Talk around town is that Jajumpa is a local sword seller and may be able to help us track down the blade. We catch the Lalafell on his way out of the village. He tells us that while he can't help us find the blade we seek, we may be able to find a sword similar in design in a discard pile at a spring to the east. Hildebrand thinks that we can give a fake to the old man in the meantime while we go find the actual sword. This is going to come back to bite us. We make our way to the spring to look for the sword, but Hildebrand insists we help him apply salamander oil on his body before he goes diving in to look. A cat, just cut this part out of the video. Thanks. So with that unspeakable horror out of the way, we dive in and look for clues. There isn't much here, but we manage to fish out a worthless bottle, a useless rock, and an irrelevant pot shirt. Seems like a dead end, until Nashu trips over something in the spring. By a manner of luck, she finds a sword. Let's see if the old man likes this one. But first, we really need to get Hildebrand into some new clothes. While we head back, Nashu heads to Ulda to get his new attire and some requested hair tonic for the old man. When we arrive back in the village, Hildebrand passes off the look-alike blade to the old man as if it were his father's missing ancient blade. Apparently, the old man buys it, saying that the scratches line up with the blade that he knew. As we talk, Nashu arrives with the new clothes and hair tonic. Wait, something's off. From outside, a calling card flies in and strikes Hildebrand in the forehead. Thinking it from an admirer, Hildebrand reads it aloud. I shall come to claim the collector's blade. This is clearly a challenge from the duelist. Our investigator extraordinaire couldn't be happier to duel the duelist. And with that, he quick changes in front of our very eyes under the blinding light of the old man's bald head into his gentlemanly attire. Challenge accepted, mystery duelist. It seems our thieving duelist is after some weapon in particular, a so-called collector's blade. 
Ellie suspects that they're after the Treaty Blade, part of an Ishgardian noble's collection. The weapon was recently purchased by an Uldan collector in Vesper Bay. We swing by Camp Drybone on our way to pick up some flowers the collector is supposedly fond of. Might help us get in a word. However, while we're in town, we overhear an accusation. A curt gentleman weasels out a confession from a murderer in the middle of town. Word around town is that he's a baron from Ishgard. Since when did investigating become so popular? As we head over to Vesper Bay to meet with this collector, we are met with a bit of an uptight attitude. Derilda is not exactly the friendliest sort, and the flowers didn't help the situation. We try to warn her of the threat posed by the thieving duelist, but she will not hear of it. She has already hired a capable investigator and guard of her own. Except, Hildebrand is not the man she hired. Following close behind is the Baron investigator we overheard at Camp Drybone. The Baron is who Derilda called, and, perhaps to secure the job from us, he offers to investigate the duelist free of charge, for the thrill of the case is enough. His name is Briarden, Consulting Inspector. Hildebrand and Briarden don't hit it off well, each thinking nothing of the other's skill. Briarden takes his leave, asking that Derilda contact him when she's ready. With his departure comes the arrival of a young girl, Maria. Derilda asks Maria where her vase is. Apparently she dropped it in the water when something flew over her head. Derilda is furious and demands Maria go back and find the vase. Seeing a clear way to prove his worth and potentially earn the right to work on the duelist case, Hildebrand offers to go find the missing vase. As we make our way downstream, we come across a flamboyant oaf sitting in the water. He mumbles to himself and mentions a sharp object. Beneath his feet are shards of the vase we're looking for. He asks if it belongs to us. He claims to have accidentally stepped on it while searching for his weapon. A demon bird supposedly swooped in and stole it. Well, one job at a time. We pick up the pieces of the destroyed vase and hand them over to Hildebrand. Hildebrand claims there is but one person in all Eorzea that is capable of reconstructing the vase. A goldsmith of legend who not only puts his hammer to great crafts, but also to serve justice in combat every so often. Before we search out this goldsmith, the oaf in red introduces himself to us. He is Gilgamesh, and his companion, the Green Rooster, is Enkidu. Well, he claims to not have seen the real Enkidu in a while, so he tamed and painted a rooster green to ease the burden of loneliness. Anyway, Gilgamesh extends his aid to us in search of the goldsmith of legend. Once again, our work takes us to the oddest of tangents. This Greg fellow is suspicious. I'm not sure we should trust him. The new traveling party heads out to Camp Blue Frog to look for signs of the goldsmith. This area is rumored to be where he procures some of his materials. On arrival, we find a trail of monster corpses with clear hammer wounds. Hildebrand knows what he must do. He must dance! Uh, what? He tells us that it was the dance of House Manderville passed down from father to son. Should a family member see the dance, they must reveal themselves. However, Hildebrand hurt himself while dancing and asks us to continue in his stead. Okay, honestly, I'm curious what this has to do with anything given the situation, so I'll do it. Good, cause I don't dance. Making my way up to the freshly slain Chimera, I perform the Manderville Dance. Off in the distance, a voice asks if we fancy ourselves a Manderville man. Suddenly, a mostly naked man leaps onto the path. He identifies himself as Godbert, the very one who slayed the Chimera. He was drawn out by the dance and asked where we learned such a secret dance. It's at this moment that Godbert makes eye contact with Hildebrand, who has been backing away this whole time. In a moment of panic, Hildebrand makes a mad dash in the opposite direction. Godbert is surprised to see the investigator still alive and positions himself to chase. In a supersonic burst of energy, Godbert sprints after Hildebrand and catches him in a suplex. The sheer force buries Hildebrand halfway in the dirt, and we catch up to the two of them. Godbert scolds Hildebrand, saying it's been ten years since he left home, and five since the incident with Dalamud. Oh boy, Godbert is Hildebrand's father, and Hildebrand never told him he wasn't actually dead. Despite the awkward reunion, we do have a vase that needs fixing, so we ask the legendary goldsmith Godbert to assist us. Godbert takes the vase and fixes it right up. Nice. But wait, he's not done there. After a finishing touch, he restores the antique into a completely new look altogether. Impressive, yet a little past what we asked for. I hope the collector likes it. Godbert asks Hildebrand about his son's work with the hammer, but Hildebrand reminds his father that he's an investigator, not a goldsmith. We explain how we're sort of on the trail of a thieving duelist. 
Gilgamesh chimes in saying he's something of a duelist himself. Should we find our duelist, Gilgamesh would like the opportunity to test their skill. Hmm, how many duelists do you know of, FaZe? Not many. Do you think Greg is the duelist we're looking for? I'm not sure, but let's keep it to ourselves for now. With a vase repaired, we make our way back to Vesper Bay, along with Godbert, who happens to have business there himself. Gilgamesh will meet up with us later, as he may have spotted the demon bird that has his weapon. At Derilda's house, we return the new vase, but she thinks we stole a different one altogether. It's during this rant that Godbert enters the home. Her tone immediately shifts as she finds out Godbert crafted the vase. All of a sudden, she loves the centerpiece. She also changes tone around the duelist case when Godbert mentioned his son is Hildebrand and all of a sudden she is practically begging that Hildebrand take the case. Oh, to be well known. As a first step to this new case, Hildebrand suggests we talk with Briarden to pick up any leads. Though reluctant to share, Briarden explains that we had several reproductions of the Treaty Blade commissioned, which should be arriving here from different routes. When the thief strikes any one of these transports, we will converge on his location and apprehend the duelist. Bryden suggests we disguise ourselves as small folk on one of the routes to watch for the duelist. Hildebrand finally decides to ask what this thief actually looks like. Ellie tells us to look for a towering brute in red who wields a halberd. As Ellie and Bryden take their leave, Gilgamesh finds us. Hildebrand greets him and lets him know that our thief wears a ridiculous outfit. Should we tell him, Cap? Based on the description of what we know of him, Gilgamesh has to be the thief. Hildebrand may not be the brightest. Let's see if he figures it out. Maybe his mind just needs some time to process the facts. Like a dial-up connection. Without further delay, we make our way out to the observatorium to pose as small folk and await our thief, or wait for Hildebrand to come to a realization. Over in the Corthon Highlands, we look around for signs of the thieving duelist, but find no signs of him. I wonder why. Oh wow, not even Gilgamesh can find him. In our search, though, Nashu happens to find the same halberd that propelled Hildebrand to the Red Moon. Hildebrand takes the halberd in case he's forced to face off against the duelist. Seeing no sign of the thief in town, we head outside the walls to search. We look around for what feels like ages. To break up the silence, Hildebrand asks Gilgamesh about the weapon he's looking for. Why does he covet it so? Gilgamesh explains how you have to see it to understand. His weapon is much like a spear with an axe blade at the one end with a musket barrel welded to it. The strongest of spears was Gilgamesh's first weapon when he came to these lands. Gilgamesh notices Hildebrand is holding the spear he's been searching for all this time. Hildebrand assures him that the spear is his own, claimed over five years ago. The two of them go back and forth, trying to pry the spear from one another, each claiming to be the owner. As they fight over the weapon, Ellie and Briarden rush in and congratulate Hildebrand for catching the thieving duelist in the act. Well, it was about time people caught on to Gilgamesh being the suspect we're looking for. Gilgamesh claims that he earned each weapon he took. He takes trophies for beating his opponents in single combat. I guess it depends on how you look at it, but from my point of view, that's a confession. Seeing himself unable to convince everyone that he's not a thief, Gilgamesh runs off with the spear. He ran off to Griffin Crossing, which is still impassable. Inspector Briarden recognizes us as the only true warriors here and asks us to challenge the duelist. We make our way to the bridge to face Gilgamesh and find our target nearing the end of the bridge. He claims to have been waiting for us, wondering if we were content to watch events unfold with minimal interaction. He's on to us, FaZe. Our cover is blown. This guy doesn't seem too bright. Let's beat him up before he tells Hildebrand. Gilgamesh says that it was fate that would pit us against one another. If we fight him in combat, we may take back the spear. If he should win, our weapons are forfeit. Uh, cat, he's in beginning. Phase, that's not a word. Oh wait, never mind. Gilgamesh and his trusty sidekick Enkidu, the green chicken, have a few tricks up their sleeves in this battle. Gilgamesh transforms us into frogs and we must run for our lives from the hungry chicken. In all the confusion, we somehow manage to get the upper hand and Gilgamesh admits defeat. But then he tricks us and runs off again, and then attempts to escape on the wings of his green chicken and falls off the bridge. Looks like there were two chickens all along. Briarden notes that we're still armed, indicating our defeat of Gilgamesh. Good thing we still have the treaty blade. Let's head back to Derilda and deliver it. Hildebrand and Briarden both attempt to take credit for the sword's delivery to Drulda, who immediately takes the sword and walks away. While lamenting that our good friend Greg was the thief, Drulda walks up asking Briarden why he didn't wait for her at the docks. 
cat, who did you give the sword to? Me? I'm just standing here watching events unfold. I didn't touch the sword. Well, who is this? Everyone stares at Darilda in great confusion as she asks us where her treaty blade is. In shock, Briarden runs off and finds the mask on the ground, discarded. Ellie notes that Gilgamesh never spoke of the treaty blade, only the halberd. He also always dueled his opponents for their weapons rather than simply steal them. Hildebrand realizes, as we all do, that Gilgamesh was not actually the thief we were looking for. While we're pondering this, a calling card yet again flies past us, and this time hits Briarden in the forehead. The new card reads, 400 years have I slept, 1,000 faces do I wear. What is yours will be mine. I shall come to claim the Lapis Maiden's virtue. As Inspector Briarden rises to accept the challenge, Hildebrand steals the show and declares that he and he alone accepts the thief's challenge. Angered at Hildebrand's constant interference, Briarden chases Hildebrand around, much to everyone's amusement. Greg did nothing wrong and you can't convince me otherwise. We should follow Hildebrand though, he gets lost easily. No way, he said he could do this on his own. Would you do it for a kitty snack? No. Would you do it for two kitty snacks? Mmm, three? Okay, three. Let's head out, gang. Hildebrand is bound to have found trouble already. Be sure to thumbs up and hit the subscribe button down below. Click the bell to be notified of future videos. What did you enjoy or not enjoy about the Hildebrand Agent of Inquiry quests? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.